NBC6 celebrates Black History Month. Perseverance, passion, poise. The essence of black women empowering the next generation. The incomparable journey of leaders triumphant in the face of adversity. I am the voice for the voiceless. God is using me. Blazing trails, building bridges, and catapulting their communities. I have an obligation uh, to push uh, our people into their greatness. A tribute to change agents, paving the path in South Florida. Welcome to NBC6's Paving the Path. Black women in South Florida. I'm Trina Robinson. And I'm Dewan Strader. While we honor the greats of our past and present during Black History Month, tonight we turn our focus to the leading ladies who are doing phenomenal work in our community. And Jawan, we come to you from the Little Haiti Cultural Complex, which has become a hub for Black Caribbean art. This art gallery that we stand in pays homage to black women. The piece behind us, called The Rehearsal, was created by Haitian artist Francesca Lulan. And the fight for equality and justice for minorities is not reserved for men. Many women have positioned themselves on the front line to fight for equality and for the cause. And that's the legacy of the first woman we highlight, U.S. Representative Frederica Wilson. Her unmatched service to the community took her from an elementary school in Liberty City to the halls of Congress. You may know her as the lady with the flashy hats who's passionate about helping young black men succeed. But underneath the hat, there's much more. Born Frederica Patricia Smith in Overtown in 1942, she was raised in one of the first homes in Liberty City built by her father, a home that still sits there today. It's still special to me to this day. So much happened in that home. Little Freddie, as her family called her, was always destined to be a leader. She was known to ask a lot of questions as a child. And the same people today who used to say, stop talking, Frederica. These are the same people who tell me now, speak, Frederica, speak. The Congresswoman says that she got the political bug at a very early age from the smartest man she ever knew, her father, who was also very active in the community. And he would hold court in our dining room. And these people would come. Those traits from her father and mother would later pay off when Wilson was a principal at then Skyway Elementary School back in the early 90s. So she fought to get rid of a $27 million waste plant to protect the health of her kids, even though she was warned not to get involved. And the superintendent told me that what you're doing is not in the job description of a principal and we wish you would stop. And if you don't stop, we're gonna put you on prescription. And I said, what would the prescription say? That I wanted my children to die, that I might wanted my community to suffer? So I continued. And seven months later, the waste plant was shut down. But she didn't stop there. Principal Wilson took on another movement, making sure Haitian refugees, especially women, were treated fairly when they arrived on U.S. soil. Wilson soon became known as a voice for the voiceless as she realized she had a calling in politics. She was elected and served six years on the Miami-Dade School Board, then went on to serve in the State House and State Senate, but she wasn't done. God spoke to me and said, you run for Congress. You take your message nationally. What you have done in this county, take it to the national stage. And that's what I did. She sure did. Wilson was elected to Congress in 2010, and she couldn't wait to get to work. Carrie Meeks told me this. She said, Frederica, they're not going to be ready for you. But out of everything she's accomplished, it's her work with young black males, making sure they have strong black role models to follow. A little boy, if he gets off the beaten path, he's going straight to prison. That's why she founded the 5,000 Role Models of Excellence Project, a program that's dear to her heart and her legacy. The role models will never go away. Never. They will never go away. Keep your head up and know that no one can bring you down except you. For years, the program has awarded millions of dollars in college scholarships and enriched the lives of thousands of young men. 
examples seen on the walls in her downtown Miami office and in colleges across the country. It really taught me respect and how to treat people and how to act around individuals that are older than me and younger than me. Congresswoman Frederica Wilson, a South Florida staple, a role model herself who wants to be remembered for this. Someone who really will go out of their way to help others, even people who don't want help. And Trina, she's a very special woman. Oh, yeah, she is. And you know what? I love her <laughs> signature look, those big hats. Where did she get the idea for that kind of style? You know, everybody asks her that question, and it's from her grandmother, who she was named after. Mm -hmm. She says that her grandmother was her role model, and she loved the way she dressed, which included those signature cowboy hats. And, Juwan, there's another charismatic woman who holds a powerful seat. She's Judge Alona Holmes, the only black female on the Broward County Circuit Court bench. She served on the bench for more than 20 years presiding over some of Broward's most high-profile criminal cases. Her peers call her firm, friendly, and fair. The Judge Holmes believes she brings a different kind of perspective to the courtroom. The way I think may not be the way my white colleagues think. Um, I bring a different perspective based upon life experience, what I've been through. I grew up in North Philadelphia. I've looked down the barrel of firearms and, and shotguns and, and run from gang violence. Holmes emphasizes that there aren't enough black women in the criminal justice system, and she says that needs to change. I would like to see more black women grace these courtrooms, but a lot of them uh, shy away. And, and that, that's, that's a detriment to defendants, um, because traditionally the law was seen as a man's job. You know, this, you're, you're taking a man's job. No, I didn't take a man's job. You know, if he was good, he'd be here. Judge Holmes goes on to say her obligation is to push her community to greatness. Here in Little Haiti, one woman has made insurmountable efforts to uplift her community. She has a nonprofit organization that benefits underserved Haitian women. NBC6 anchor Sharon Lawson shares the courageous advocacy work of activist Marlene Bastian. On any given day, you'll find Marlene Bastien advocating for the less fortunate. She's the founder and director of FAM, Haitian Women of Miami, a nonprofit providing programs for those in need while focusing on the family. Because we believe that strong families make strong communities. That strong belief ingrained in her from a young child growing up in Haiti to a mother and father who were both farmers. My dad built the first school in our village which he donated to, bah to the Baha'i faith. And then uh, we were children, but we had to volunteer at an early age in the school. As an adult, when she arrived in South Florida in the early 80s, she continued to volunteer wherever she saw a need. But while working at the Haitian Refugee Center and Jackson Memorial Hospital, Marlene took it to a different level, exploding into a champion for human rights. Just because you're poor, just because you're undocumented, that doesn't mean that if you're sick, you have to die. Being a voice for the voiceless, her accomplishments celebrated and honored. When you say yes, we can, you really mean it. No challenge too big or small, she'll rally up the troops, whether she's shedding light on inequalities, immigration or political instability in Haiti. That is why we hope and we pray that our leaders in Haiti will put their, their, their heads together, will unite. And as she takes on obstacles and struggles, she can't help but burst with pride as she shares the cultural diversity of Miami's little Haiti. We're trying to preserve the cultural identity of the place, and then we want those who, were, who lived here, who settled here, you know, over 30 years ago, to be able to remain. More than an activist, Marlene Bastien is a trailblazer with a war your spirit. What is life without, stand, without standing up for those who are disenfranchised? We value life. We value human beings. And then there are some basic rights that cannot be trampled on. Coming up, her son's shooting death made headlines and sparked a national conversation. Now Sabrina Fulton is using her personal tragedy to spread a message of peace and hope to black youth. As a black female, I'm very proud to be in this profession. Leading from one of the highest ranks in law enforcement. Next, how this woman in blue climbed the ladder in a male-dominated field.
She was once a young girl with big dreams who jumped the hurdles in a rigorous race to become a respected member of law enforcement. Willard Shepard takes us from her humble start to one of the top spots on the force. The Miami Police Department's Delma Noel Pratt has to stay sharp. The police division chief has under her command the most important economic engines in South Florida, the Port of Miami and Miami International Airport. Uh, like you said, it is a big responsibility. We have to make sure that we secure those two entities day in and day out because they are targets. Um, they are uh, places of opportunity. Getting out of the car, going into the terminal just to check. On this day, Noelle Pratt stops by one of the MIA terminals. She has a wide range of officers on duty, including canine teams. Being responsible for the security here naturally can bring with it the pressure of making sure things don't go awry. I take every day, every day, one day, one day at a time. Um, like I said, I'm very proud to have those various entities under my purview. How's it going today? Been busy? She first set out to be an attorney, but took a turn into law enforcement. The division chief worked her way up through the ranks, starting out on the road 23 years ago. And now the SRT team is just one of her responsibilities. And I'm very proud that I represent uh, the women that are in law enforcement right now. All right, guys, it's reset. It's the, the, door. the special response team is called into action in the most dangerous of situations. After patrolling the northwest section of the county, she moved to public housing patrols and then tackled white collar crime in the public corruptions unit. Always present, a drive to be the best and a recognition she had to show she could handle this challenging work each day. Yes, this male dominant uh, career that we have right here, you basically have to prove yourself. You have to make sure that you can do exactly what the males can do. Now of utmost importance to her, community policing and building bridges in areas where police and residents don't always see eye to eye. She has one daughter who may want to follow in her footsteps. Her message to the younger generation? I believe that it's important to um, stay in school, do good in school. Just consistently work at it, make sure that they don't lose focus. Um, as a black female, I'm very proud to be in this profession. March ever forward, breaking down bars. Look ever upward at the sun and the stars. Oh, my dark children, may my dreams and my prayers impel you forever up the great stairs. For I will be with you till no white brother dares keep down the children of the Negro mother. Urban League of Broward County President Dr. Jermaine Smith Ball reciting Langston Hughes, The Negro Mother. Smith Ball sharing the poem at the NBC6 Telemundo 51 Black History Celebration. She's been with the Urban League for 20 years, and her contributions to the black community are countless. She assists more than 7,000 children and women in the areas of education, jobs, housing, and health. Up next, she's one of South Florida's familiar faces and sheroes. Her decades-long fight to keep her forgotten community from falling apart. And an exhibit of excellence, portraits of prominence. The movers and shakers captured in a powerful display coming up. Welcome back to NBC6, Paving the Path, where the Little Haiti Cultural Complex and the artwork featured in this gallery displays the resilience of the black woman. She evokes strength during struggles. She triumphs over tragedy. A great example is Sabrina Fulton, whose son Trayvon Martin was shot and killed in 2012. The teen's mother has turned her grief into a movement against gun violence. Fulton started the Trayvon Martin Foundation to also empower inner city youth. The organization hosts a peace walk in Miami Gardens and Remembrance Dinner annually to honor Trayvon. Funds from the dinner help provide scholarships to students in the community. Fulton's work with the foundation has reached communities across the globe. She recently traveled to countries in Africa to spread the message against gun violence.
Sabrina Fulton was among 50 prominent black women celebrated at the Women of a New Tribe exhibit. Also recognized as a highly esteemed woman who I have the honor of working with right here, my co-host Trina Robinson. Their gorgeous portraits were unveiled at the Stephen P. Clark Center in Miami. Oh, it was such an honor. And to be with those women of that caliber who've done so much to craft and shape our community, um, I just feel humbled and proud. And you deserve it. Thank you so much, Joanne. But the photographer not only capturing their beauty, but also the great contributions these ladies have made to the black community. The Women of a New Tribe exhibit encapsulates the awesome power of 50 black women making their mark across South Florida with fad faces, profound poses, and dramatic finishes. Cox Radio's Jill Tracy loved how the creator captured the essence of her. But I felt like he just really got just my joie de vivre. And yeah, I'm really happy. I can't wait till we can take him home. Face to the light. The light is our friend. The he she mentioned is famed photographer Jerry Talafiero. Before the photographic portraits were hung at Miami Dade's Stephen P. Clark Center. <laughs> I got exclusive behind the scene access as Miami Dade Commissioner Barbara Jordan and others worked the camera for an exhibition he's taken in the past around the country and the world. In a, in a sentence, uh, I want them to understand that beauty, the beauty that strikes the eye is very fleeting. That uh, you have to see what you're sold. Sabrina Fulton, the mother of slain teen Trayvon Martin, was one of the honorees. Smile, both smile. The Thank photographer you. even took the opportunity to include her mom. Sabrina, what was it like seeing your finished photograph? I don't know. Uh, it just was so, to me, the pictures that I've seen so far are just so powerful. And um, I know this is the year of the woman. It's always been a woman's year. The Miami Day Black Affairs Advisory Board this year is calling it right now the year of the black woman. The event, the brainchild of Miami-Dade's Black Advisory Board, and the unveiling ceremony celebrated all of black history. As those who came to admire the photos joined in an old-fashioned gospel sing-along. Then, the audience was awed by spoken word artist Rebecca Butterfly Vaughns. I give thanks for the women who fed nations of children from their breasts children that didn't even come from their own womb. I just yeah. think about my daughter and get excited. I'm like, oh, I love her so much. Public relations titan Susan McDowell of Circle of One Marketing brought style and confidence to her photo shoot. You know, to look and see, you know, in the eyes of all of these women and, you know, feel them, that's the most important thing for me is I want somebody to look at my picture and feel my personality. And so, you know, people are all so different, and, but we're having in common that we're black women. I was also honored to be a part of the exhibit. So, Jerry, I am in place. Here's a look at my photo shoot as I got dolled up for lots of flashes of the camera, multiple outfits, and now the final work of art in black and white. You did a phenomenal job. Yeah, it was great working with Jerry. The collection of South Florida photo portraits will ultimately become part of a book that catalogs the photographer's work and these women for all of eternity. The next South Florida legend marched on a road unseen and unpredicted. Behind her stood a village that pushed her onward and upward. Now she's paving a path to success for the future leaders of that very same village. NBC 6's Michael Spears has her story. Just standing outside uh, one day with some neighbors. You could call it her aha moment. And we were complaining about that current council and how nothing was happening in the village. The village, here it's literal. The village of El Portel, Miami-Dade County in the late 1990s. And someone said, well, why don't you run? And we thought about it. And they all said, well, we'll back you, we'll do the campaigning. And they stuck to their words, they helped campaign, and I won. It's a win that helped seal her fate. In 99, I, I, I took the position of mayor, and the rest was history. In the nearly two decades that followed, Mayor Audrey Edmondson became Commissioner Audrey Edmondson, elected to the Miami-Dade County Commission, where for more than a decade, she has fought for jobs, safety, and inclusiveness for minorities and the taxpayers of her district, neighborhoods like Wynwood, Overtown, and Liberty City. Is there any one accomplishment that just really 
makes you happier than the rest, that you feel most proud about, I should say? MCI. MCI. So these are all these fifth graders? The Miami Children's Good Initiative. Good everyone. Good a nonprofit organization modeled after the Harlem Children's Zone in New York City that's investing in our future, keeping kids on track from tots to tassels and providing support for parents. Commissioner Edmondson helped bring the initiative to a neighborhood whose name is synonymous with the ills of inner city life, Liberty City. I think it takes a community, it takes a village. The word village here takes on a much different meaning, different than the place that helped launch Edmondson's career in politics. This village helped shape her. And I grew up in Liberty City, and I was really a latchkey kid in a way because my mom, uh, she had to work. The neighbors watched me. They watched out if I came out. Memories from a bygone era. The Liberty City of today is a much different place. But on these streets, the pendulum has begun to swing the other way. If Liberty City is the village, then MCI is the newly laid concrete foundation, the work being done to fix the tears to the social fabric of the community. Right, how many steps are there to follow? In just four years, MCI has built places for kids to play, created after-school programs, stayed late to help with homework, University. and even put together a college tour for teens. The initiative began its mission focused on a few neighborhood blocks in Liberty City and has since grown to include eight blocks of families from Northwest 17th Avenue up to 22nd and 62nd Street down to 59th. Edmondson has been there all along the way to support an initiative that she considers one of her greatest contributions to Miami-Dade County. Before MCI, these children would have been out unsupervised. But now what I see is children being supervised. I see them learning. I see them involved in activities that can help them through the rest of their lives. Families are actually looking out for the kids on the block, whether it's their children or not. Uh, they really look at Liberty City and the eight block perimeter as this is my child. She, she helps build, build the village. It is yet to be seen just how big MCI will grow to be here in Liberty City. What are we doing? In the tireless work, it doesn't come cheap, but the initiative has a 10-year plan. She really believes in seeing Liberty City being like every other city. And builders like Commissioner Edmondson. This is something that I'm very proud of. After all, you know how the saying goes. They have a sense of community now. It takes a village. That village. Yes, that village. To raise a child. We want you to join the conversation. Tell us, how are you or a woman you admire paving the path? Leave a comment on our Facebook page or send us a tweet using the hashtag paving the path. Our handles are at JawanNBC6 and at TrinaNBC6. Without the blood, sweat, and tears of the women featured tonight, many of the lives they've touched may have been lost. Now we know their stories will inspire you to carve out your own lane. In the words of the late Maya Angelou, we may encounter many defeats, but we must not be defeated. Thank you so much for watching. NBC6 is paving the path from the Little Haiti Cultural Complex. Have a great night.